Nighttime has hit Istanbul, Turkey. A look at the Ortakoy Mosque, some 800 years old, as we continue with the 2010 FIBA World Championships. And the fans in this wonderful city making their way into the Abdi Apekci Arena in Istanbul for Team USA against Brazil. Two unbeatens going at it here in preliminary play. With Fran Fraschilla, I'm Mark Kestesher. We know Kevin Durant, Fran, has been spectacular, but very strong bench play so far for Coach K. Well, Mike Krzyzewski said this tournament is a marathon and not a sprint. So he's going to need all 12 players and four of the top six scores for Team USA come off the bench, including this trio who has absolutely lit it up and uh, provide that Energizer Bunny-like effect, particularly in the second quarter against teams that don't have the same kind of depth that Team USA has. Great numbers off the bench. You see, of course, Russell Westbrook, 82%. A lot of that at the rim early on for Team USA and Coach K. And, of course, the U.S. has won the first two games. Their opponent today will be Leandro Barbosa and Brazil, the speedy guard, American fans, NBA fans, very familiar with his work. Sure, for, former sixth man of the year. Great run with the Phoenix Suns. Traded in the offseason for Hato Turkoglu. So he'll play next season with the Toronto Raptors. Four NBA players for Brazil. Three available for this, including Anderson Verajao, who's not played the first two games because of an ankle injury, will come off the bench today. And uh, he, he, they have rested him specifically for this third game of the preliminary round. Here are the standings for Group B. Slovenia temporarily on top with a win earlier today, but the U.S. and Brazil both undefeated. Top four of the six will advance to the knockout round, but effectively, Fran, the winner of this game has the inside track for the top seed. You would think so. If Team USA wins this game, they'll have uh, games with Iran and Tunisia later in the week. They should be walkover games, quite frankly. Here are the starting lineups for this evening's game. The same starting five for Team USA, led by Kevin Durant. And as we look at the Brazilian starting lineup, number 15, Tiago Splitter. NBA fans have heard a lot about him. The San Antonio Spurs will finally get him, but American fans will get a chance to see what Splitter can do tonight. In 2002, he was on that Brazilian team in the World Championships as a 17-year-old. Eight years later, he's a very polished, low-post player and probably the best big man in Europe this past season. So it could be a very interesting game. Certainly the uh, ability, what Anderson Verajao can give Ruben Magnano, the coach of Brazil, this evening will be key. The Americans have defeated Croatia and Slovenia by 28 and 22 points. The Brazilians knocking off Iran and Tunisia. Kind of reverse order for how these teams will play preliminary action. And that's why it's such a big game for Brazil. They still have... Uh, competitive games left with Croatia and Slovenia. So Leandro Barbosa and Team Brazil making its way. You see Lamar Odom of the Los Angeles Lakers also coming on court soon. Before this game even tips off, Fran, what has impressed you most about this youthful Team USA roster through its first two victories? You know what? I think it's been the energy, enthusiasm, and certainly the pressure defense starting with the backcourt. Key today is to keep Brazil out of transition and also match them on the glass because of uh, Splitter and potentially Varejao. Andre Iguodala, the Philadelphia 76ers. Of course, one of the outstanding wingmen along with Kevin Durant. And Derrick Rose has been spectacular since coming into the starting lineup for Team USA during the friendlies in Spain and Greece. And we are just about set. This is the final game of the day in Group B in Istanbul. Tiago Splitter will be joining the San Antonio Spurs. They're checking out his uniform, making sure he's up to FIBA code. There have been websites dedicated to, does Tiago Splitter really exist? Well, he has been a fabulous player in Spain, and he's about to make his way to San Antonio, and you get a look at him as he jumps it up with Lamar Odom and a violation as yesterday. Andre Godal looking to see. Tied possession. They'll I think they're going to jump it up do again. It again. Both, both players jump too soon. The only time they do it in FIBA rules. That's exactly at the start right. Of the game. Including overtime. No, no jump ball at the start of overtime. All right, so we'll get a look at Brazil here on the first possession. Man-to-man <laughs> -man for Team USA. Iguodala gets the assignment on Barbosa. It tells you all you need to know about 
Coach K's confidence in him defensively. Shot clock at six, and the first basket goes down for Marcelo Huertas. That is his uh, customary little floater. Huertas, who plays and very successfully as a point guard in Spain right now. Now, the Americans in the half-court game, that's really something where is a key for this team is how much production they will have in half-court offense. We've seen what they could do in transition. Kevin Durant's first shot on the fadeaway doesn't fall. Well, Marcus Vinicius uh, had a cup of coffee with the New Orleans Hornets. And he's a long athletic guy. He gets the assignment of guarding Durant early. And we got to look at Tiago Splitter. And that time it's Huertas once again. A lot of two-man game, little pick-and-roll game. Very, and that time just took it right to the basket. Very much so. The coach, Coach Magnano, used to coach Argentina with a much more structured offense than he has with these players who are used to playing a lot of pick-and-roll. Penetration that time, and Chauncey Billups getting inside for the first U.S. basket. Team's kind of feeling each other out here in the early going. Key for Team USA is to keep the pressure on Huertas. They don't really have a solid backup right now at the point guard spot. And a near turnover, last touch by Kevin Durant. And so Brazil will keep it. Both teams uh, dealing with some turnover issues. Team USA had 17 yesterday. Uh, Brazil had some difficulties, had some lapses really against Tunisia, but really seem up to the test early going. This is kind of the pace they want to play. And that time Huertas looked to make the extra pass and a turnover. This is where the U.S. excels and Iguodala gets fouled and he'll go to the free throw line. Garcia picking up his first, number one. Well, if you're Mike Krzyzewski, I think one thing you were worried about coming into the tournament was, could you get this fast-paced offense going against quality competition? There's no question after two games that the key way for Team USA to have its most success is the transition offense off pressure defense. Andre Godala at the line for two. Probably the largest crowd inside the Abdi Apechi Arena right now. For Team USA in Brazil, of course, all the NBA players from the U.S. side. We told you about the three NBA players suiting up for Brazil in the last game of the day. Some American fans enjoying their trip to Istanbul. So tied at four. A little pressure now by the U.S. See the ball handling skills of Tiago Splitter. Uh, probably not what Coach Magnano wants, nevertheless. And that's Tough. why. Second turnover by Brazil, and this is what the U.S. wants. Durant, fouled, gets the basket, and he'll go to the line. Kevin Durant, you know, I was thinking about this, and I've said this a couple times. If you're drafting the best player in the world right now, and you've got to decide whether to take a 25-year-old LeBron James, who clearly is right there with Kobe Bryant, and a 21-year-old Kevin Durant. It'd be an interesting argument about who to take number one. You're looking at a guy right here with still enormous potential to continue to improve. Three-point play by Kevin Durant. Seven straight United States points after Brazil took the first four. Nice, uh, nice break that time of the pressure. And an easy basket for Alex Garcia. Huertas is not a jet, but he's a very smart, heady player. And Garcia, by the way, played for two NBA teams, including the San Antonio Spurs. He's uh, wearing number nine in green. Last name, uh, we have Miss Huertas. You'll see Marcelino on the back of his jersey. A lot of these Brazilian players, there's nicknames on the back of the jersey, some of their given names. And Kevin Durant, again, he's not doing it inside, he's doing it outside. He's got five of the U.S. 10. He keeps playing the way he's playing. You only need to go by one name, Kevin. <laughs> already a KD. That might be a little... That's, that's too many syllables. That might be too many already. Here's Splitter, fouled by Lamar Odom. Now, Splitter is a very accomplished, smart player. And he took the ball right at Odom. Fundamentally sound now. He's played a lot of basketball. He's not a great scorer, but he's an energy guy, excellent rebounder, moves his feet well defensively and pick and roll, but sound fundamentally. 
First team foul on the U.S. as Brazil will take it out. Splitter could have been in San Antonio a couple of years ago, but quite frankly made a lot more money playing in Spain. Do you think he was ready two years ago, or is yes. this the, a better product we're going to no, get? No, he's out? a better product, but he, the reason Tiago Splitter did not come over to the NBA any earlier was because of huge buyout issues when he was a young player. And then the last couple years, after the buyout was settled, he was making terrific money in Spain. Rare U.S. turnover. Barbosa the steal. And there's the block by Iguodala down low. Brazil with another chance. They've hit their first five baskets of the game. Now, you see, Brazil does not mind pushing the pace. As you mentioned early, Mark, this is their style of play. It's a fluid, very open court style. But the question is, can they run for 40 minutes with Team USA? And another U.S. turnover. Durant thought maybe there was contact. Last touch by Kevin. And it'll go to Brazil. Tied at 10 here in the early going in Istanbul. Well, we talked about a lot of contact in FIBA play. It's, it's a much more physical brand of basketball than the NBA, where they call a lot of contact out front much more closely. As you see, Brazil hit its first five field goals, all layups or in the low post. Now you see what they've got. It's a spread pick and roll with four perimeter guys. Splitter will screen and roll to the basket. And the jump shot goes in for Marcus Vinicius. So they've hit their first six. 7-0 Brazil run. This game going back and forth. Vinicius not known to be a great shooter, but he gets the open look. And you'll see offensively Brazil very wide open spread attack. A little one-on-one -on -one play by the U.S. as Lamar Odom forced up a shot. Well, as good as Team USA's quickness and talent is, uh, there's only only a couple. You know, Durant may be the only guy that you want to allow to operate one-on-one -on -one most of the time. Here's Barbosa with a floater. A couple of U.S. defenders got in his way. Well, That's a good test for U.S. after the first two games, not really having uh, a lot of competition for most of the game. Here with a chance to play a very good Brazil team, and they have no way to defend Kevin Durant at this point. Well, Kevin Durant, no, we're, we're going to get tired of talking about all the ways he can really help your team. But certainly offensively, he scores in a variety of spots. I mean, he's a scoring machine. He's got nine of the 13 points. He could do it inside. He could do it out. There's a nice move by Splitter, but didn't finish. Little transition play. Odom, finger roll. Well, that's a, that's the situation now you find yourself if you're Coach Magnano of Brazil. Your, your game is to run, but when you run with Team USA, you're playing with fire. So how effective can they be in the half court? And you can see early on they've tried to go to Splitter inside. And Splitter throws one up and it goes down. Tiago Splitter played the last seven years in Spain, the uh, ACB Player of the Year this past year. And opted out of his contract to go to San Antonio. Says he has some visa issues he's working on, but plans to be there for the start of training camp. Chauncey Billups knocking down a three. Now you're looking at a guy that's knocked down almost 1,600 NBA threes in his career, and he's gotten very comfortable with that international line so far. The United States hitting all three of its three-pointers to start the game. Barbosa hangs in the air and gets it to fall right off the scouting report little Kansas secondary break set that I've seen this Brazil use and it allows Barbosa to get free you see they don't mind running here comes Huertas nice give Garcia and it won't fall boy it seems like even when they miss baskets they're really well designed plays they this team plays very well together well right now Team USA is providing no defensive effort in terms of guarding either in transition or the half court sets and coach K up with 321 to go in the opening quarter coverage of the FIBA World Championship continues on ESPN Wednesday and Thursday noon Wednesday the U.S. gets Iran and then 930 Eastern on ESPN 2 Thursday Tunisia against USA and Fran Iran picking up its first ever World Championship win the game before ours just earlier holding off Tunisia that was an interesting game right on the backs of uh, Memphis Grizzlies backup center Hamed Haddadi who had 23 and 13. Off the window, Durant with a rare miss. One point game as we come up on three minutes to go in the first quarter. You can see Kevin Love has now played himself into that nine man rotation. That's a nice move by Splitter, but an even better defensive play by Rudy Gay just into the game. Rudy Gay has been sensational defensively in this tournament. 
Well, uh, Coach K with a line change here, and Brazil turns it over in transition. One, see. Uh, one, one thing about Puertas, uh, Mark, is he, attend, he tends at times to get a little bit out of control in terms of his decision making. But you see the length and athleticism of Rudy Gay, who's been a guy, he's almost the second unit's Kevin Durant. He gives you on the second unit what Kevin Durant gives you on the first unit the scoring and also now the energy and the hustle on the backboards. Kevin Durant staying in for this entire quarter, and now we've got four backups around him. Interesting to see Kevin Love first big off the bench. Well, he's proven it. You know, here's a guy that's at, he's got 21 rebounds in his first 27 minutes of action, and he's that ideal fifth guy, excellent teammate, high IQ. Seven on the shot for the U.S. Eric Gordon, three pointer. And he was so close with those earlier. Nice play by Gay, and then a whistle against Brazil. Hey, credit Rudy Gay. Now, we all know he's an outstanding scorer, but the effort that he has given Mike Krzyzewski, both defensively and on both backboards, has been outstanding so far in this tournament. A look at Guillerme Giovanoni, who had been in the starting lineup. Four team fouls now for Brazil in this first quarter, and those who might be new to FIBA play, five team fouls, and then bonus free throws for the other team. And also five personal fouls gets you uh, eliminated from the game, unlike six in the, in the NBA. And so the U.S. with a two-point lead as we come down the final two and a half minutes of this first quarter. There was... Uh, a lot of hope Anderson Verajao would put Brazil at full strength. We've not seen him in this first quarter, so Ruben Magnano, the head coach, certainly has to be very pleased with what he's seen so far. Remember, they're playing without Nene as well, who did not make the final roster because of a knee injury. Well, I see a lot of pick and roll, re-screens for the point guard. And a three-point basket for the left-hander, Alex Garcia, and Brazil goes right back in front. Well, because Garcia has played a, with a couple teams in the NBA, much like a lot of these Brazil players, they are not intimidated. Here's Kevin Love going to try the outside jumper. He's got that in his arsenal. He sure does. And what he gives you right now is obviously the screening, the passing ability, the rebounding ability. And he knocks down that international three, which only adds to the ways he can help your team. Whistle outside on Russell Westbrook, who picks up the foul, his first. This is the third game in three days for Team USA. Uh, also, they played the first game yesterday. They got the last game tonight. Any concerns that would affect this? No, play? I don't really think so. They, they, uh, they had a walkthrough at noon today. Uh, they had time on their hands, obviously. You don't always like to play the last game of the day and sit around, but something that you, uh, you just play through. Quarter to 10 in the evening, Istanbul time. And Leandro Barbosa knocks down a three. So Brazil goes back in front. Now Barbosa did not have a great season a year ago, primarily because of injuries. But uh, we know he can shoot that three, especially when you give him space. Yeah, and his three-point shooting was down this year. It was the wrist uh, surgery he had in January. Nearly turned it over there. Brazil shooting 71%. And you can see the three-point shooting has been outstanding for both teams. Well, you mentioned Barbosa after all those years in Phoenix will be going to Toronto, part of the Hito Turkoglu trade. Off balance three knocks it in. Leandro Barbosa, Leandrinho, as they call him in Brazil. Uh, we have seen this before. Barbosa, a guy that averaged 21 points a game for Brazil a year ago in FIBA America's play. Westbrook tried to dish it off. And it goes out of bounds to Brazil. This is a good test right now. And you see some of the body language again in this game on the part of these young USA players. Something that they have to learn to play through. Brazil basically right now, Mark, can throw caution to the wind. Uh, they know they're not supposed to win this game. But on, on the other hand, a lot of these guys have a lot of experience playing against NBA players. So they really can just play the game, not worry about anything. There's Tiago Splitter from Barbosa. And the biggest lead of the evening for Brazil. This is eight consecutive points.
Splitter has played so much international basketball for us. Guy 6'11", 7 feet. He really understands pick and roll basketball. Final shot for the U.S. And Splitter with the block at the cup. One second to go. Barbosa, they heave, and it hits the front rim. What an impressive first quarter for Brazil. Well, they played with no fear, confidence, and they lead by six. It's not going to be easy. In Istanbul, Brazil 28-22 over Team USA after one quarter. With Fran Fraschilla, I'm Mark Kestischer. Fran, this is the first time Team USA has trailed after a quarter in this tournament. And partly because Brazil has gotten the ball in deep, both in transition and pick and roll basketball. 16 points in the low paint so far for that Brazil team. Three second violation called against Lamar Odom as Chauncey Billups. At least Lamar thought the shot was going to go up, so another U.S. turnover. Well, exactly. Number there's seven. A, there's an understanding if you're Chauncey Billups, just get that ball on the rim because uh, Lamar Odom's crashing the boards thinking he's going to have to offensive rebound that shot. Giovanone into the basket area for Ruben Magnano. As Fran said, he led Argentina to gold at the 04 Olympics, silver at the 02 championships in Indianapolis, which uh, a dark period for well, and actually, Team USA basketball. He is the first coach to defeat Team USA while Team USA played NBA players after that 53 game winning streak it came to end at the hands of Argentina in 2002. There's a big basket for Kevin Durant and he'll get to the line. Well right now if you're Team USA you think you're going to score enough points you got this guy on the floor to do it but 30 points in a little over a quarter is something that's got to concern you. Second foul on Tiago Splitter that ends a 10-0 Brazil run. And Kevin Durant, who's been the steadying force on this team, when you take it back to Las Vegas in the training camp last month, you know, Coach Krzyzewski was saying, just score the ball. Do what you do in Oklahoma City. He was deferring a lot. That's and right. it seems, you know, he's such a quiet guy. You know, we're seeing this maturation process of Kevin Durant, but we really seem to be seeing it in this tournament as well. Even great players are role players, and his role is to be... A, an aggressive scorer for this team. Well, now the question is defensively for the U.S. as Vanicius lines one up and hits it from the left side. That started because of a weakness in pick and roll defense. When you have to suck in to guard splitter on the roll, you're going to leave the weak side open. Derrick Rose, as you pointed out, built for the international game, muscles one to the rim. That's Barbosa's shot in transition. Rare miss for Team Brazil from the perimeter or anywhere. Durant trying to create off balance. A lot of bodies underneath, and Thiago Splitter comes up with a rebound. If I were Durant right there, I would have gone right at Splitter instead of double pumping, knowing that Splitter has the two fouls. Again, a lot of pick and roll. Floaters, good. that's his game. The other way, Derrick Rose chased down by Huertas, now picked up by Barbosa. Seems like Rose has had a little trouble with the ball tonight. A couple times been slipping out of his hands. Billups for three. You know, the U.S. has had such a big rebounding advantage also early on, but in a kind of a half-court set like this and those outside shots, the first time you might see that size advantage really come into play for Brazil. As Billups commits the foul is first. See, Billups very lucky here that Splitter almost could have picked up a moving screen foul. We got a timeout in Istanbul. It has been a fight early on. The two unbeatens from Group B going at it. ESPN's coverage of Major League Baseball continues tonight and Wednesday. Tonight, the Mets and Braves, 7 Eastern on ESPN HD. Huge win for the Braves last night. And don't forget, Wednesday night baseball, the A's and Yankees from the Bronx, 7 Eastern time, ESPN HD. Both games available on ESPN3.com. Well, as the baseball races are heating up, this tournament seems to be heating up, Fran, as Brazil is giving uh, the U.S. just about all it can handle in the first half. Right now, they have spread the floor. They've gone what we call a spread pick and roll with four perimeter players and a screener rolling. And with a crafty operator like Marcelinho running the point, he's made, for the most part, very, very good decisions 
and put Team USA in a bad way defensively. We just got a shot of Marcelino, number nine, plays in Europe. Nice pass, and all alone to put it in is Chauncey Billups. Now, what you like about Team USA's situation right now, Mark, is this. You know that in a tournament that becomes a knockout tournament next week, you have to overcome a bad quarter or a bad half, and that's the situation Team USA finds themselves in right now. Durant nearly picked it from behind, and Giovanino nearly put it in. And here comes Team U.S. You know, it seems like the rule of thumb as Rose draws a foul on his way to the basket is you really can't have a five-minute lapse in FIBA play. You can overcome it, but the games are so short, it does right. it has well, a bigger effect. You can't have that that uh, five-minute lapse later on in the tournament against the quality teams. Obviously, you can overcome it against teams that you're much better than, but this is why this is a good lesson today early in this game for Team USA. Derrick Rose will launch and miss. See, that's not a shot. That, to me, is an invisible turnover, a contested shot with a man right in your face. Very few NBA players are going to make that shot consistently. Rose went for it and got it. And is fouled by Barbosa. And will get two free throws. Well, that's the kind of defense they're looking for. It's a gambling kind of defense at times, but that time it paid off. Well, that's exactly right. They run through passing lanes. And oftentimes it's feast or famine, but here's an example where Derrick Rose is going to get a chance to feast on two free throws. Leandro Barbosa picking up his first personal foul for Brazil. And Derrick Rose, who took over as the starting guard for Team USA in the midst of the lead up to this tournament, missing a free throw. And that's actually for a team that in NBA statistics have been a great free throw sh shooting team they've actually missed <laughs> many more than you would think so far in the first two including the exhibition games we saw Chauncey Billups miss uh, a couple pairs of free throws and you're talking about a career 90% three point shoot the ball is different there's no question it's a uh, it, it's a uh, it's a slicker ball than comes out of the box uh, in an NBA or college ball the tackiness of the the new NBA college balls. This ball is a funky ball to handle, but everybody plays with the same basketball. It's a bad turnover. You're looking at J.P. Batista, who should be uh, known to college fans, Gonzaga days. That's exactly right. Gonzaga well represented in this tournament. J.P. Batista, and then three current Zags, Elias Harris from Germany, and Robert Zachary and Kelly Olenek from uh, Canada. Here's a three-point try and another contested shot, Fran, from the U.S. goes awry. Right now, we live and die with a lot of individual play. And right now, we're dying a little bit by shooting some shots early in the shot clock that you could shoot later on in the shot clock. Another foul against Chauncey Billups. That'll be number two for Team USA. If there was one big adjustment you'd make right now for the Americans, what would it be? Well, it's interesting. They've got to be able to defend the pick and roll a little bit better but the problem is when you when you're defending a spread pick and roll you've got to give something up you've either got to guard the, the big rolling to the rim uh, but when you help off of him you're leaving three good shooters open outside that's why spread pick and roll is so hard for NBA teams to guard it's an offense that Mike D'Antoni used quite extensively with the Phoenix Suns well the US taketh away give it right back Marcelo Machado on the board off the uh, giveaway by Iguodala. 67% shooting for Brazil in the first half. Now part of it has been easy opportunities like this. They've knocked down some threes, and they've just been very effective in spreading the floor. Now Coach K is looking for the right combination. He's brought Russell Westbrook back into the game. See, this is almost a team right now without splitter. Team USA could play. Kevin Durant at the five, and they could do a lot of switching. Here comes Brazil again. Machado nearly out of control. Coming up on five minutes to go, and the U.S. stuck at 30 points and down five in Istanbul. This is the preliminary round. Top four of the six in the group will advance to the knockout stage, but a chance to get the inside track on the top seed, which will also afford you, Fran, an extra day's rest as you look forward to the knockout round. There's some interesting possibilities shaping up for Team USA. Uh, if they are to win, 
uh, Group B and go 5 and 0. Oh. The quarterfinal game will likely be against two very interesting opponents, Mark. Could be Turkey or Greece, and we will talk about that coming up. Timeout in Istanbul in the first half. Coverage of the FIBA World Championship continues on ESPN. Noon Eastern on Wednesday against Iran. And then Thursday morning, 9.30 Eastern. Breakfast in Istanbul for Tunisia and Team USA. We got you covered all the way to the gold medal game of the World Championships with Fran Fraschilla. I'm Mark Kestesher. And a look at Marcelo Huertas, Marcelino, who has kind of sliced and diced you, uh, Team USA in the first half. You know, we were, I, I was thinking he, he's like Drew Brees in the Saints because at his best, he's really hard to guard because when he makes good decisions, he puts the ball in the right spot. Your screener rolling to the rim is like your running game, and those three outside shooters they have on the floor, that's your passing game. So they've got a dilemma right now with this multi-dimensional Brazil attack. Russell Westbrook drawing contact at the line, and now Team USA will try to muscle up a little bit on offense and make this a more physical game. Well, for Team USA offensively right now, it's basically been all one-on-one -on -one basketball. Russell Westbrook, who had a breakout season with Oklahoma City, and there's always been so much talk about his defense. Uh, averaged 20 points a game against the Lakers in that first round series. He and Kevin Durant have something special going in Oklahoma City, and he's been big for Coach K as well with this team. His first two points gets the U.S. within five. See, I'm going to be very interested to see if they make any adjustments now. You watch. There's not much you have to run if you're Coach Magnano because pick and roll basketball has been so good. Now here's a little flex offense, a la those Argentina teams. Watch the back screen here. They, go, they guarded it well. And it turns into pick and roll because they understand the shot clock. And a nice defensive effort, as you point out, by Team USA. Perhaps their best so far today. Now the thing about guarding a team like Brazil, we've said this a number of times, you've got to have defensive patience. And a nice follow by Kevin Durant to finish the dunk. He's got 14 of the 34. U.S. cutting it down to a three-point game. See, right now you have a very mobile Team USA front line, so you can afford to do a lot of switching. No roll that time, and off the hands of Batista, and the U.S. will try to speed this up a little bit. Westbrook. Really didn't have a pass as he went to the air. See how you can load up on Kevin Durant with five green jerseys? That's the dilemma if you have a lot of players playing too much one-on-one. -on -one. Wow, what a move by Derrick Rose. Up and under in reverse. Well, we've seen this time and again. Rose and Durant are two guys on the floor that can always create their own scoring opportunity. One-point game in Istanbul. And a Brazilian turnover, but it comes right back to him. Lining up the three, Vinicius, and he knocks it down. You know, and that's a crusher if you're Team USA. That's a five-point play. Lamar, Lamar Odom with the uh, turnover. And Vinicius, who is normally not uh, more, he's more of a streak shooter and slasher. And there's another player slipping on the advertising we've seen in this tournament. That was Kevin Durant who went down, but a nice block from behind by Team USA. And Rudy Gay, how about his defensive work? Taking it to the team is Lamar Odom. See, this is an opportunity right now for Team USA to use their depth and try to get some defensive stops and get out in transition. But it has to start with patience on this end of the floor. Another three-point attempt for Brazil off the window and in for Giovanoni. Well, that time when the defender has to guard the roll man, Giovanoni's going to be open, but you don't count on him banking a shot in. But you know what? This is the kind of adversity that's perfect for Team USA right now. How do they handle this? Kevin Durant, that's a great way to handle Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Put it in his hands. You get a sense now Kevin Durant is going to be forced in the second half to become what we call that alpha male taking over the game. He has 17 points, averaged 30 points a game in his third NBA season. And a whistle against Team USA. It looks like Kevin Love getting set to come back in for the final two minutes of the first half. Now, minus one turnover so far 
on an Ill, ill-advised decision in transition. Huertas, who, by the way, played high school basketball in Texas for a year. His English is phenomenal. His dad played in college. Huertas has really done a terrific job of running this team to the point where I don't think he's come out of the game yet because we haven't seen uh, uh, Dos Santos or the young 18-year-old Neto. And Rudy Gay, the foul on Tiago Splitter. And Neto's going to be interesting to see if he comes in. Not even 18 yet, as I you don't, point out. I'll tell you, he, uh, he's, he's, I saw him play at the end of June. He was brilliant against the Team USA team that won the Under-18 America's Championship. But I'm not sure Neto is ready for this uh, you know, level of play. Well, one person we haven't seen is Anderson Verajao. Who knows if uh, he really can play the extent of the injury of the ankle is unknown. Obviously, as you see Anderson sitting there on the bench, he didn't play the first two. The thought was at least play against the U.S. and the only one of the five games because Brazil has enough firepower to get through to the I, I knockout round. I think it tells you the extent of his injury. By the way, when you watch Splitter shoot free throws this year, he shoots to the left side of the rim. Well, without Anderson Verajao, friend, Brazil has had a fabulous first half, hitting their outside shots. Now they've gone to a zone. See, the first, see, that was a one pass and shot by Westbrook against a zone with a defender who's taller and a hand up when it was early in the shot clock. Now, that's that, to me, is not a smart play. Fran, is this all stuff uh, Coach K and his brain trust can make adjustments at halftime they're going to have to adjust to the fact that brazil has brilliantly spread the floor today but i'll tell you what this guy's like an octopus and he gets fouled on his way toward the basket and if that's on garcia that's going to be his third but maybe not an octopus but the venus flytrap steal by kevin durant you see the anguish but watch this poke away that's a seven foot five wingspan right there against a solid nba guard and then that's one of those situations where Garcia, Garcia's got to use his head because he's in foul trouble. Westbrook comes out. You were telling me uh, Kevin Durant, even though he's always been listed about 6'9 or 6'10, he obviously plays much bigger than that with the length of his arms, but he might still be growing at age 21. You know, lot, uh, when we were, we were in New York with the Team USA team, a lot of the people around Team USA swears he's 6'11. He's got a 7'5" wingspan right now so the US has it down to one with a minute 19 to go first half the two unbeatens of group B in the third of five preliminary round games in Istanbul you notice Team USA has been unable to really speed up uh, Huertas in terms of uh, getting him to play out of control nine to shoot Look at this. Behind the back to Look at this. This is textbook pick and roll. This reminds me a little bit of that game in 2006 against Greece when they had no answer defensively. Now you see a little bit of a 2-3 matchup zone here. That about poked away by Garcia. Brazil, because of the effectiveness of the pick and roll, now has 20 points in the paint, in the low paint near the rim. By the way, they did not call that foul on Garcia, so he still has two fouls. Here's Eric Gordon for three, coming up short, but Kevin Love, a big rebound. Couldn't get the putback to go down. Final 20 seconds of the first half. Team USA finding itself down for the first time in the tournament. I can tell you this, they don't have to run any offense except pick and roll. There they go, and Splitter just tosses it up. And the U.S. will have five seconds. Durant ticked away from behind. Here's the last shot for Brazil. And it doesn't go down for Barbosa, but a three-point Brazil lead at halftime. Some adjustments to come in Istanbul. Coming up at the half, Mike Yam. Back in Istanbul, a look at the Yeni Mosque. Yeni means new. In Turkish years, 800 years old, I, I guess is new. The 2010 FIBA World Championships continuing, and the U.S., well, they've got a struggle here. 46-43, Brazil the lead. 
at the half. With Fran Fraschilla, I'm Mark Kestesher. Kevin Durant is carrying the U.S. load to this point, Fran. I don't know that he's come out of the game in this first half. People want to know why he only played uh, 22 minutes yesterday. And Coach K said it was a long tournament. And I guess for days like this, where they'll need every one of these circus shots that he hit in the first half just to keep Team USA uh, in this ballgame. And you can see uh, the others really haven't stepped up so far on the offensive side. Though Team Brazil without Anderson Varejao thought they'd have him. Been sitting on the bench and they haven't needed him. Tiago Splitter number 15 in green. You see him coming up with nine points. Leandro Barbosa and of course Marcus Vinicius. Having a big all-around game with 11 points. 58% shooting for Brazil, 64% from three. And the U.S. is going to have to figure out how to defend them a little better. Now right there, Brazil right out of the timeout trying to get a backdoor cut that was open, but Splitter couldn't connect with Barbosa, taking advantage of Team USA, knowing they have to come out and start the second half in pressure. All right, friend, we talked about it before the half. What adjustments do you see now for Team USA after well, two quarters? Primarily, I mean, that's, uh, offensively, it's one pass and a shot right now, okay? So that, that you can't have, and it's a little different opponent, obviously. Defensively now, you have to decide how to guard the pick and roll, and I think what you have to do is you've got to make Huertas, the point guard, a scorer. Make him shoot those runners over length because they're giving up too much on the roll and too much in terms of the open threes because of the help. We apologize for the technical difficulties with the clock above the basket. You can see 920 to go and a foul against Brazil on the push. Marcelinho will pick up the foul. That'll be number two on Huertas. Now the difference in between FIBA play and the NBA rules is the defense of three second line in the NBA. But in FIBA play, you can load five green jerseys to the ball. That's why, unless you're so accomplished like Kevin Durant or Rose, you really can't play just one-on-one -on -one jacket basketball. That time it fell down for Lamar Odom, but you're going to have to hit a lot of shots like that and lower percentage. Exactly right. Now well, both teams won their opening two preliminary round games. Still two to come for each. The U.S. has two teams they should beat easily. Brazil still has two tougher teams. Tiago Splitter will miss on the jumper. Now, first two times they've gone pick and roll. It's been a very hard show by Lamar Odom. Almost a trap. And a turnover by Derrick Rose. The other way, and a dunk for Marcus Vinicius, who's having a huge game against the Americans with 13. You mean Marcus Vinicius Vieira de Souza, <laughs> don't you? Yes. In the box score is de Souza. Vieira on the back of his jersey. Vinicius in our lineup. And an offensive foul against Lamar Odom. We have not had a possession yet on the part of Team USA that has involved more than one pass. Everything has been catch and drive to the rim or catch and shoot. Now, keep in mind, there were possessions in the first half where Brazil made some very tough shots. We know that. But you still have to get sound. But you see the athleticism of Venetia, still a young guy, never really had an opportunity to do much in New Orleans, and now plays uh, in the Brazilian National League. Lamar Odom picking up his second personal foul. We mentioned four NBA players on the Brazilian roster. They lost Nene last week. So down to three. And now Anderson Varejao hasn't played in 12 days. They're down to two, but they have three other players who play in Europe, including Marcus Vinicius, who plays in Italy. Here's a pull-up three for Billups. Doesn't go down. And a foul. It'll stay on this side against Brazil. That's going to be on Splitter. And that'll be number three on Tiago Splitter. And Splitter looks over to Magnano, the coach, and says, I'm okay. See Splitter right there. Good job by Lamar Odom getting inside position. Fran, uh, as you get a chance to look at all the international players, you've seen Splitter quite a bit as Chauncey Billups will get to the line for two. A lot of U.S. and NBA fans really getting to see him almost for the first time. If they haven't watched in a couple of years, you think he's going to fit in real well in San Antonio? Well, he's perfect for Tim Duncan because Splitter's still more of a center than he is a forward, although he's very mobile. Wants to drive right here. Foul looks like it's on Huertas. 
and but that'll be his third. What friend. it does, what it does for San Antonio, it prolongs Tim Duncan's longevity in terms of not having to play him more than 26, 28 minutes during the regular season. Can they play those guys together? Yeah, sure, Pop can do it because he had Robinson and Duncan early in Duncan's career. But Splitter's more of a back to the basket guy. But don't discount the fact that he's got very quick feet for a, for a seven footer. That helps you in pick and roll defense. Under 7.40 to go in the third quarter. Brazil has led much of the way. They had a six point lead after one, up three at the half. Right now, a one point advantage as they load up Splitter against Odom. There's an example right there of what Lamar Odom will see from Splitter. Now, again, took his time. He's very good at using what I call the Larry Johnson back end dribble to get himself in position to go over either shoulder. Very fundamentally sound. Was it me or did that look a lot like Tim Duncan on that play before <laughs> yep. off the window? And here's a little defense from Splitter off the turnover, but his pass intercepted. Durant in the lane, floats. And a whistle underneath against U.S. goes to Brazil. Remember Kevin Durant, I don't think, has come out of this game yet. And you don't mind the aggressive offense from Kevin Durant because he, you know what he's gonna, you're going to get from him. He doesn't finish here. And now Tyson Chandler hasn't seen a lot of time. I called it against Brazil. That foul's going to be on Lamar Odom, his third, so he's going to come out of the lineup. And Tyson Chandler, who has struggled at the start of this tournament, going to get some playing time against Splitter. Well, he struggled offensively for sure, Mark, but all you need right now is him to provide the things he does well, protect the rim and bang with Splitter. Well, Splitter and Barbosa have been a good two-man game for Brazil. Fall away three, short. Now, I have a feeling that Team USA has started to switch all pick and rolls because that time Chandler was very aggressive in jumping out on Barbosa. They've done that three or four possessions so far. And the question I would ask right now is what are you running? You're playing one on five right now. And Durant's the one and he's a good one. You like that? Penetration by Chauncey Billups sucked in the green jerseys and got it to the man who you know has the capability of taking over. 22 points for Kevin Durant. He has drawn this game to a tie. Of course, that FIBA three-point line still in and will be coming back after the tournament back toward the NBA line. Here's the lefty Garcia. That's one of those situations where you don't need to help off of Huertas. Make your point guard now take shots. But you have to defend that three-point line. There's Derrick Rose in the point guard creating some offense. Boy, have we seen that little floater jump hook from Derrick Rose in this tournament? That jump hook would be befitting of a seven-footer. Take a look at this. Over splitter. ESPN's coverage of Major League Baseball continues tonight and Wednesday. This evening, Mets and Braves in Atlanta, 7 Eastern time on ESPN HD. And then Wednesday Night Baseball from New York, the Yankees and the A's. Also 7 Eastern time, ESPN HD, and both games available on ESPN3.com. With Fran Fraschilla, I'm Mark Kestesher. In Istanbul, Turkey, Team USA has taken the lead. Thanks to Kevin Durant and Derek Rose getting some offense going. A uh, two-point lead over Brazil. And what you want to do right now for Team USA is there's no such thing as a 10-point play. In order to get this lead, keep this lead and stretch it out, it must be possession by possession, particularly on the defensive end of the floor. And that is an area where Team USA struggled in the first half but seemed to have tightened up here in the third quarter. This will be pick and roll now. The, and that's a dilemma when you help Barbosa was open for the three and the long rebound to Splitter. Here's the baseline drive and the tip out of bounds. 18 to shoot for Brazil. Now Brazil has not knocked down those last two threes, but again, with Huertas, who's such a good passer, I use that Drew Brees analogy for a reason. You have to make him become more of a scorer. Otherwise, you're going to give up threes and be at the mercy of of uh, hot shooting from guys like Giovanoni and Garcia. Fran, after the 7 for 11 three point shooting in the first half, Brazil's missed its first three three pointers. Touch pass to Barbosa. 0 for 4 from three. 
kept alive, but right to Chauncey Billups. Durant thought about it. Iguodala with the hook, but he'll get to the line. And that isolation situation was set up because of the attention the defense had to give to Kevin Durant when he dropped it down to the baseline. Iguodala had more of an opportunity to have a room to operate. Foul was on Vinicius, his second. That's 14 fouls against Team Brazil. So 447 to go in the third, and the U.S. will be in the bonus as Russell Westbrook sits and watches. You know, it makes sense, Mark. All you want to do against a stationary defense is move them from side to side a couple times in a possession to spread them out. But if you come down and just attack one side of the floor in FIBA play, you're basically playing three on five. That simple pass to Durant and then a look to the baseline to Iguodala spread the court just enough for Iguodala to operate. Good adjustments made so far by Team USA. It's hard to believe for Brazil in the 06 World Championships in Japan, they didn't even make it out of group play. They ended up finishing 19th, which is hard to imagine. Post up here for Splitter. Calls for it against Chandler. Looks to back him down, and Chandler gets called for that bump. I don't think Tyson agreed with the call, but he picks up his first. Anytime you extend that right arm, that time it was the left arm, it looked like both arms, they've been calling that a foul. They'll allow you to use your body without your hands. Rudy Gay back into the U.S. lineup. Derrick Rose headed to the bench. Well, earlier today in Group B, Slovenia beat Croatia by seven. That was the first time in Group B there was a game decided by less than 10 points. And this, this one has potential to even beat that one from earlier today. Nice team offense by Brazil. Ball will not go down for Huertas. Approaching four minutes to go in the quarter. Nice spin move, and Billups will get to the free throw line. That's a veteran play right there. Chauncey Billups, watch him now. He takes his body right into Huertas' hands. And you see Huertas tried to poke it loose early. Coach Magnano didn't like the call. And, Fran, that's going to be four fouls on Marcelino. Well, let's see now. They probably go to uh, Dos Santos unless they go big. Barbosa not really a pure point guard, so maybe Coach uh, Magnano will stay with the veterans. And that's what looks like they're going to do. They're not going to play Dos Santos or the young guy, Nato. And Barbosa will be your point guard. And if you're Team USA right now, you want to crowd up on Leandro Barbosa, who's not really a playmaker. One more for Phillips, and the U.S. has run off eight consecutive points, and all of a sudden, a five-point lead for Team USA. Well, now it's almost time for see if Brazil makes that adjustment or if they just continue to do what they do, which right now is Tiago Splitter against Tyson Chandler. Uh, he did a nice job. Oh, and a late foul called against Chandler. That's a, that's a bailout foul. That yeah. there was solid defense by Chandler, and that's poor officiating because you don't reward a guy who's going nowhere. Now, it looks like they got Durant on the reach in. And if that's the case, they got that one right. But Chandler did a solid job of walling off the rim from Splitter because he put his hands to the ceiling rather on Splitter's back. Now the pick and roll has not been effective to start the second half so they've gone at Splitter. They're going to try the outside again and that's a big hit for Brazil as Marcelo Machado gets a big three. That's a guy his one the one thing he does if you're in Iguodala is that's what he does he shoots the three. You almost want to make the driver shoot the basketball because if you help on the driver you're going to open up that weak side three. Billups found a seam and gets it to go. There's the veteran presence of the Denver Nuggets guard, five-time NBA All-Star. Coming up on 3.15 to go, third quarter in a four-point game. Floater going down for Machado. Starting to feel it now. Last two baskets for Brazil. Well, this is a guy that scored 63 points in a Brazilian league game. 
Averaged 26 a game this year for his Brazilian club. And I'd rather Machado shoot the drive and the floater than to give him the open three. And a turnover and a travel on Kevin Durant. We haven't seen a lot of those in this game, but certainly has plagued the Americans in the tournament. You'll likely see him in the fourth quarter. Yes. So you have, you have to play through this right now. Very close right there. Again, you can't lift that pivot foot up unless you release the ball from your hand. And that possession, it looked like he did. 15 turnovers for Team USA, and now Brazil gives one back. Pick up the ball, get it to a guard. Now let's see if they can just spread Brazil out in the half court with a little bit of ball movement, maybe pick and roll here. Here's Billups. Hands for Durant and a one-hand stop. A one-man wrecking crew for Team USA, 24 for Kevin Durant. Now credit Chauncey Billups for getting a piece of the paint, using that strength. Brazil finding the baskets tougher to come by a wide open three for Barbosa. Splinter gets the rebound in traffic and it's knocked out by Chandler. That was a possession where Russell Westbrook basically took the possession off, got lost on the on the ball side, and by the time Brazil made two or three passes, somebody was left open. Tyson Chandler will take a seat as Andre Godala comes back in. That's not a bad segment by Tyson Chandler when Coach K needed him. No, he did a solid job. Splitter hit the one jump shot, but at least with his presence out there, it caused Coach Magnano to say, do we really want to try to go inside versus the seven-footer? Lamar Odom back on the floor with three fouls. As Rudy Gay takes a seat. Under two minutes to go in the quarter. Barbosa flicks one up. And Lamar Odom will dribble. Now the U.S. pulls out. It's not been a speed game for Team USA today. They have not. Brazil has really not allowed them to get any transitions. One thing you, one thing you do if you play in a team like Team USA is don't crash the boards as much as you normally do on the offensive end and get everybody back. I don't think Odom was ready for that one. Five on two. Minute and a half to go in the quarter. And Brazil getting a little bit cold from the outside. Here comes a break. Durant getting through the traffic and in for the bucket. Well, very solid there. The rebound, finally an easy open court opportunity. You're right, Mark. Brazil has lived and died with that three. Oh. Yeah. And an offensive foul against Brazil. Now that might be, is that Splitter's fourth? Because if it, if it is, Coach Magnano has got a tough decision right here. Yeah, I do have him for four fouls, so Huertas and Splitter. A couple of starters, both with four fouls, with about a minute to go in the third quarter as he lowered the boom on Lamar Odom. It was a very close call, but Lamar Odom did a good job of getting in legal guarding position. You don't have to get your chest in front of the man with the ball. You can actually take a charge with your back, but you have to be established with both feet on the ground. 107 on the clock in the third quarter. The U.S., which is trailed by as many as eight tonight, right now with a six-point lead. In the corner, Durant. And it goes out of bounds over the back. Get our first look at uh, Marillo Becker coming into the game as Kevin Durant thinks about it on the other way. Marillo Becker, a, a 6'10 power forward. He's wearing number six in the green and gold. Shot clock at seven. Down to two. Barbosa knocking down the three with the shot clock winding down. Now that was a poor job of weak side rotation. That, that forces uh, Durant came late. He had to help. And by him coming late, it sucked in the other white jersey and allowed Barbosa to hang out on that weak side. Barbosa with 11, U.S. up three. 15 seconds to go in the quarter. U.S. missed the shot. Barbosa tiptoes on the far sideline. And a whistle from behind and a foul against Andre Iguodala. Now, there might have been contact here. Let's take a look. I'm not sure. See, that's uh, 
you're rewarding a guy out of control in that situation. He had almost already lost the basketball, and that official came from the uh, from the trail spot at the other end of the court. So the, the, the official in the area where the call should have been made, he bypassed it, and the, the third official came from the trail spot as they were in transition. Brandon Godal is going to sit down. He's got two. Um, Brazil in the bonus, so they'll get some free throws here. Tell you what, if you're Coach Magnano right now, you want to get to about the seven-minute mark of this game with uh, with Splitta and Huertas on the bench. If you're still in the ball game, you're going to feel pretty good about this. Splitter and Huertas on the bench with four fouls. The Brazilian fans in Istanbul. Great heritage of basketball dating back to the 50s and the 60s. Oscar Schmidt. But now trying to. Uh, Oscar Schmidt, who scored 40,000, 49,000 career points as a professional. We never did see Oscar compete against the uh, NBA players in his prime. He loved in Rio and out of bounds to the U.S. with just a couple of ticks left on the third quarter. Zero point eight. And, uh, you have it. You have a catch and shoot opportunity here. It's got to be well conceived. Lob off the rim, Odom, but can't get it to go. So the U.S. down for much of the game, a 61-59 lead over Brazil, with 10 minutes to go in Istanbul. Last game of the night at Abdi Apechki Arena in Istanbul, an entertaining game. The U.S. up two, and Fran, here's the implication. Slovenia has three points, two points for a win, a point for the loss, but the two unbeatens, the winner of this game, has the inside track on the top seed in the group. Well, no question. If Team USA wins, they will walk over Iran and Tunisia. Croatia and Slovenia await Brazil. But if there is a tie in terms of the records, if both the USA and Brazil are four and one, Brazil would obviously win the tiebreaker. Um, but it's it's very interesting. Uh, this is the difference. If they lose this game, finish second, they would play Sunday instead of Monday, and have a slightly more difficult uh, would it be round of 16 opponent out of Group A. And of course, the World Championships, the 2010 FIBA World Championships continue. Here's what the USA will have coming up for its next two games. As we have a delay on the court, we'll let you know the schedule on ESPN. Noon Eastern Time Wednesday against Iran, which is coming off its first ever win earlier today in Istanbul. And then on Thursday, Tunisia, the only team without a victory through the first three, 9.30 a.m. Eastern Time on ESPN2. Got to look at the Brazil bench just a few seconds ago, and uh, both Splitter and Huertas will start this fourth quarter on the bench with four fouls each. And as a coach now, you're just looking at that clock. Obviously, they've got a malfunction with this uh, score clock, but as a coach, you've got a clock in your head. As long as you're within two, four, five, six points, you're probably going to keep those guys on the bench, but it'll be interesting to see how quickly Coach Magnano comes back with uh, the, the two guys, I think, in terms of that pick-and-roll offense in the first half, Splitter and Huertas, uh, who really were the catalyst for that three-point lead. So a two-point U.S. advantage. The uh, crowd trying to get into it musically here as they fix the scoreboard. And it's a chance for us, really, to kind of catch our breath and take a look at the tournament as a whole. We know Spain got upset in its first game. They have bounced back. Argentina has two wins. They're number one ranked in FIBA, but they've been two very close victories. That's right. They got a third win today, right before, right earlier today. So they now go to three and zero. Oh, and Luis Scola has had a fabulous tournament. No surprise to anybody who's followed Argentina. Uh, just a solid overall, fun week of basketball. You know, Greece sque squeaked by Puerto Rico yesterday as well, and they've played against 80 minutes of zone Greece. So that uh, formidable offensive attack with the three-point guards has really been negated by their two opponents playing his own defense. And the French team uh, playing so much better than we saw in New York City during the U.S. Uh, tune-up without the likes of Tony Parker and Joe Kim Noah. Well, there, there's some international intrigue going on because uh, you've got some uh, conspiracy theorists saying that Spain might have thrown that first game because this would keep them from meeting Team USA 
until the finals, the gold medal game. But quite frankly, the way Team USA has played today, uh, they've shown uh, a good deal of vulnerability, Mark. They have, and uh, we've seen the adjustments they've tried to make on the defensive end. That this has not been the run up and down as we've seen for Team USA. It's really, and you brought this up right from training camp, the half-court offense, and there have been a number of possessions that they have not really played to the max. Well, you know, when you have two teams, that means you have two coaches, and you have two guys that pretty much know what they're doing. So if you coach Magnano, you run opportunistically, but you also know that you're not going to get, you're not going to beat Team USA on the glass without Varage out today. So you don't send anybody to the glass and you make sure five green jerseys get back and play in the half court. Fran, a good chance for us to catch up on the differences between FIBA and the NBA game. Most uh, U.S. fans are used to. Obviously, the quarters are shorter. The court is actually almost three feet shorter in length. The three-point distance you see about yep. three feet. And key in this game is the player foul limit not six but guys like uh, splitter and Huerta sitting on four let me tell you another key in this game that's not on that graphic if this game comes down to the final couple of possessions and the ball is live let's say it's a tie score and USA grabs a rebound they cannot call timeout the only time you can call timeout is when the ball is dead so that's an underrated aspect of FIBA play at the end of a game and then also regarding the trapezoid lane the second man on the lane, the offensive player, is actually closer to the middle of the floor to grab an offensive rebounder than the first man who's the defensive player. And that's a rule that will change on October 1st as they go FIBA to the NBA line. The NBA much, line. Much more, Fran, from Istanbul as they work on the technical issues. The start of the fourth quarter coming up. Back at the 2010 FIBA World Championships, Leandro Barbosa and Brazil had a three-point halftime lead. The U.S. up two. We should have the start of the fourth quarter coming up, pending the scoreboard working at the Abdi Apechi Arena. This gives Kevin Durant a chance to rest because I don't believe he's been out of the game today. Yesterday he played 22 minutes and when Coach K was quizzed after the game because Durant was off to such a great start, he said this is a marathon, not a sprint. We have to develop our 12-man bench or roster with seven bench players. But this is ideal right now because it's given Kevin Durant a chance to basically uh, have as much uh, rest as he would had he been taken out of the game in sub four. I thought uh, Jim Beheim uh, said it well to our colleague Chris Sheridan. Um, Durant could play two games a day if he needed to, but Coach K is thinking big picture, tournament, five games in exactly. six days, hold his minutes down when you can. And actually, a loss today would not be, it would be devastating from the standpoint of Team USA being vulnerable, but we all expected they would be vulnerable in this tournament. They would get a, a slightly more difficult opponent out of Group A, the third place game. But interestingly, and no one's talked about this yet, Mark, their quarterfinal game will likely be with Greece or Turkey. Now, I want you to understand the implications. Greece is the better team. They play tomorrow, by the way. But Turkey would be playing at the Dome in Istanbul with a home crowd against Team USA. If they play Greece in the quarterfinal, I guarantee you that the crowd would be pro-American because of the antipathy Turks feel for the Greek national team. Yeah, Greece and uh, Turkey have gone at it for a long time. There is no uh, love loss. That's going to be a big game coming up tomorrow. between those two yep. tomorrow. Well, the game clock at it. The shot clock is now working, and we're underway after a delay. Team USA with the lead. Let's see what Kevin Durant's got here on the reverse. Offensive rebound. Can't put the put back in. And Andre Iguodala was point blank on the back side, couldn't come up with it. Now, this is, this is fun because every possession now takes on an importance. One to shoot. Tip and won't go for Brazil. So another good defensive yeah. job by USA. They were fortunate on that time. Garcia, another quick shot by Billups. 
Now, if you're feeling it and you're making jump shots, that's a good thing. But when you shoot it quickly and miss, you go right back and now have to defend 24 more seconds. Right, it looked like they had a nice backdoor cut there, but the pass was off. And now even the U.S. offense stumbling a bit. They have started 0 for 4 in the quarter. Been a plotting game for the U.S. on offense. A whistle as Durant made his way to the rim, and he'll get a couple of free throws. A little pick and roll at the end. Chauncey Billups dropping it off to Durant. A lot of stagnation in terms of the half-court offense. Huertas making his point known. Both Portuguese and English, I'm sure. <laughs> Kevin Durant, the U.S. leading scorer, four for four at the free throw line tonight. Still stuck at 26 points with 8.37 to go in regulation. I think the U.S. thought they'd get a good test from Brazil, but deep down the way they've been playing, I'm not sure they thought they would get this good of a test. Well, and that's partly because you have so many young players on Team USA with zero international experience. And the, uh, the 08 gold medal team obviously learned a valuable lesson in 2006 when they lost to Greece in the semifinals. The United States has not won a world championship, FIBA world championship, since 1994. Things went awful. Three seconds to shoot. Here's a three-point try, and it goes in for Vinicius. What a game he has had tonight. That is a bad gamble right there. The double team in the corner allowed Brazil to play four on three on offense. Vinicius with 16, and Brazil now with a chance to take the lead. Well, you love the way Brazil is playing. They've taken advantage of breakdowns. They're also, to their credit, making some difficult shots. There's that pick-and-roll game. Venetius again from on top. And a whistle against Brazil and Barbosa. Venetius playing with a lot of confidence today. Watched him as a young player prior to being drafted. Second round pick of the New Orleans Hornets. Good job by Odom here on the backboard. You see Brazil trying to poke it free. Becker around the ball. Barbosa. Almost seemed like Becker and Barbosa rammed into each other. A little bit of pressure now for Team Brazil against an American squad that has put up five shots and missed them all in the fourth quarter. You hear the whistling now. That's not a compliment. They want, uh, they're now rooting for Brazil, this neutral crowd. The European version of the boo. Here comes Brazil on a break. Down the lane, Garcia, no. U.S. and wide open, Lamar Odom to throw it down. Odom was cherry picking because he was down on the floor on that last drive. We have hit seven minutes to go in regulation. Team USA and Brazil, both 2-0 in the 2010 FIBA World Championship. The winner will have the edge on the top seed in the group. Here comes the U.S. with an opportunity. Oh, Rose with the wraparound and the foul. He's so good at going backside of the rim. Take a look now. They're coming right at you. Get out of the way, ball boys. <laughs> Watch him use the back of the rim. He made that layup with his eyes. He kept his eyes the whole way through. That's a finish by Derrick Rose. Great basketball game and also great baseball coming up Monday night. The Mets and Braves, 7 Eastern time on ESPN HD. The Braves trying to hang on to their NL East lead. And the Yankees tied in the AL East, hosting the Oakland A's. Wednesday night baseball, 7 Eastern time. Both games available on ESPN3.com. So Derek Rose, acrobatic move. Leandro Barbosa picking up a foul as third. Team fouls in the quarter. Three for Brazil, none for the U.S. And we see Tiago Splitter with the four fouls back in the game along with Marcelo Huertas. Both with four. Five the max in FIBA. And you know Coach Manana was not going to let this game get away. Team USA now. A couple of defensive stops from blowing it open. So the veterans are back on the floor for Brasilia. Fred, I believe you said if he can get it to the seven-minute mark, and that's what he had hoped for, and here it is. You see, they're trapping pick and roll, but that's going to leave somebody open. 
Barbosa with two to shoot. Oh, nice play by Iguodala. U.S. three on two. Oh, don't do that. Oh, tough decision by Derrick Rose. You know, that drives me crazy. Puertas almost made him pay, but Splitter chases down the loose ball. Durant the steal. Almost six minutes to go in this final quarter. I've talked about that lob play from the beginning of training camp, Mark. It's just a low percentage play against good players. That may work against Tunisia. Good back screen. And a great, oh, he can't finish. So Brazil still down four. Barbosa, a little short on that fall away. And now barking at the official. See, right now, Lamar Odom needs a blow. And he did not help on that screen. Barbosa got a wide open look. This is a point in the game where even though you're coming down a stretch with your veterans, you don't want to have a fatigued player out there. Durant was looking to load him up, but now with three to shoot. He got partially blocked oh, by Vinicius. Excellent defense by the long length of Vin Vinicius. He stood his ground. Excellent job. One thing about Brazil now, they're going to run crisp stuff in the half court. That one went off the uh, foot of Iguodala, and they'll reset the shot clock. We've got a timeout in Istanbul. Both teams a little cold now, but the U.S. up four. Mark Kestesher, Fran Fraschilla, as we come down to the final 5.07 in the fourth quarter. Here's a look at Group A. Now, Group B and Group A are the crossovers once you get to the knockout round, and we're saying U.S. and Brazil could be 1-2. They would face three or four in Group A. That's exactly right. Group B's first place team would play the fourth place team. That could be that could be Germany or Argentina, Serbia possibly, who's now two and one. Nenad Kristic of the Oklahoma City Thunder, his suspension, three-game suspension is over. Watch this now because Coach Magnano runs good stuff out of timeouts. Trying to find splitter. Steps into a double team, but gets the shot off and in. See, what I said earlier, Mark, you've got to make Huerta shoot the basketball. If you suck in on his drive, that's going to open up either the three-point shot or splitter in the lane. Make Huerta be a scorer. His primary job is as a playmaker. It's like guarding Steve Nash. You'd rather stop everybody else and let Nash get his points at times. Deep in the shot clock, loose ball, and the U.S. will get a fresh 24. The question now for U.S. is what are you going to run to move this Brazil defense so that you don't have to play against a loaded defense? Lamar Odom, baseline drive, stepped on the end line, U.S. turnover. Not sure that's the play you want right there. You know, he's trying to pick up the fifth foul. And you know what? That official wasn't even looking. He was looking at the floor. He was watching Odom's feet the entire time. Here's a little runner that will it's knock okay. him down. Explain See? that rule change but, as well. Well, no. Or not rule change, but rule difference. Well, no. I, you could take that ball off the rim. But yep. in terms of strategy, Hawertus wants to be a passer first, shooter second. So why give up splitter at the rim or Barbosa from three when you know he doesn't really want to shoot the ball? Force him to beat you with his jump with his floaters. On this play, Leandro Barbosa getting called for the foul. So now three Brazilian players with four personals. That's also the fourth team foul against Brazil. So the U.S. will be in the bonus as Derrick Rose goes to the free throw line. 77% free throw shooter in his NBA brief NBA career. Hits a big one. You know what you love about this kid? He's played 12 NBA playoff games. He he's averaged about 23 points, five rebounds, seven assists in crunch time for the Chicago Bulls. So he's already proven that he's impervious most times to pressure. Knocking down both free throws. About 3.50 to go in this fourth quarter. As it gets late in Istanbul. Between the two unbeatens of Group B, out of bounds, last touched off of Billups. Chauncey Billups really did a good job of protecting for Lamar Odom, who got caught on that up screen. You can see Magnano that time went to Splitter inside. I think right now, Splitter versus Odom is a, a, a positive matchup for our, uh, our excuse me, for Brazil. 
because Odom's been on the floor a long time. Ten to shoot for Brazil. Splitter. And Odom. See what the big man does. Goes with a left hand. And the tip won't go down. And well, the difference between the first half and the second half has been very stark in how the U.S. has defended. Well, they've defended better. Remember, Brazil hit some circus shots early to their credit. Phillips, late whistle, offensive foul against Chauncey Billups. Now, Huertas, you know, took a gamble there with four fouls, Mark. But, Cha but, he, but he did a good job of staying in front of Chauncey Billups. Take a look now. See, once you establish position, you're allowed to move sideways and backwards. Once the play started with Huertas in front of Billups, he's allowed to move Huertas, and he stayed in front and backed up. Billups just ran him over. Third foul on Billups. Brazil only shooting 29% from the field in the second half. Giovanoni. Splitter seems to be everywhere for Brazil. 2.50 to go. Again, ice cold for the Brazilians. Now they got numbers because Splitter's late. Hey, hey. Right, Garcia did a nice job stepping in, sealing it off. And that's that's going to be that travel call on Durant second time. But I tell you, they'd call it in the fourth quarter, right? What's your feeling on the interpretation? Obviously, it's gotten lax. It, well, because you know what? Even in the mind of FIBA officials, everybody, oh, hey, you go out in the street in Istanbul. Hey, the U.S. is traveling. And so oftentimes, I believe they're missing some plays that are not travels because they hear it so much from the, from the international fan. Here's Splitter. Nice job by Durant to meet him. Boy, Kevin Durant really bailed out that defense because pick and roll once again. Splitter was open on the roll to the rim. Great weak side help. Coming up on two minutes to go in regulation and a four-point U.S. lead. This is probably the biggest possession of the game for Team USA. If they can get up six right here. What a spin move by Odom, but can't finish it off. Now well, the isolated splitter with the four fouls. He created some room and Odom wasn't able to finish. You can bet Brazil will run their offense till they get the look that they want. Marcelo, Marcelo Huertas and Tiago Splitter was such a formidable twosome in the first half. Barbosa for three. And another big offensive rebound. Another three for Barbosa. And another miss for Brazil. Boy, big rebound by Lamar Odom. Two for 15 shooting from the Brazilians in the fourth quarter as we come up to 120 to play. Rose lost it. They'll say last touch U.S. And Brazil will get another chance. Question for Derrick Rose right now with the lead. And it's a two possession game. Where are you going? There's a, an opportunity right there off the offensive rebound that they didn't cover the three point line. And Brazil as you mentioned Mark has just gone cold. In fact, we could say it for both teams. Seven to five U.S. Only 12 points scored in almost nine minutes of international basketball. Third preliminary of five for both teams. One will be three and oh in a top group B. On the rim. Now what they're going to say it was basket interference because it looked like somebody in a white jersey came from underneath. See, you can mess with the ball while it's on the rim. Just watch the hands now. I think it's Durant. Yep, you yep. see he went through the rim. That's basket interference. You can knock it off from the top. So Kevin Durant and the basket interference. Brazil within two. Timeout. Quarter past 11 in the evening in Istanbul, Turkey, and Team USA with a two-point lead over Brazil. A minute four to go in this preliminary round game. This is the third game in three days for the U.S. Group B gets the day off tomorrow and then back to work on Wednesday. But the winner will be atop Group B with Fran Fraschilla. I'm Mark Kestisher. And now the U.S. will uh, we'll see what they can do in the half court. It's been a struggle so far in this game. But here they are up to Coach K drawing things up in the huddle. Uh, you, you're going against a coach who has two of the seven wins against Team USA since NBA players have played in Magnano they stay man to man what does Team USA do now to run an offense to get an easy opportunity Phillips against splitter and 
and it goes down for Chauncey Billups, the senior member of this team. He's got 15. Huge uh, basket. How about the way he used his body? He took the ball right to Splitter, knowing that Splitter had the four fouls. 40 seconds to go. Dangerous pass. Brazil's been cold. Barbosa off the window, and it's back to a two-point game. Well, what you, what you liked about that possession from Team USA standpoint was you took away the three-point opportunity. 25 seconds to go. U.S. the ball and the lead. Ten to shoot. Phillips pull up this time. Won't go down. Loose Brazil has it. Down two with 10 seconds to go. Now keep your eye on the guard now. He likes to play one-on-one -on -one in these situations. Huertas... Puts it up, a whistle, and he'll go to the line with a chance to tie it and three and a half seconds to go. Very heady play by Huertas. Instead of using the screen, which would have forced a double team, he rejected the screen and chose to play one-on-one -on -one in the lane. Now remember, Mark, let's take this forward. If Huertas makes both shots... Coach K can call timeout, and Team USA can get the ball at midcourt under FIBA rules. FIBA rules, only the coach can call timeout. That's right. And only when there's a stoppage in play. Exactly. So if there's a miss, obviously Brazil will foul. Three and a half seconds to go, and two free throws for Marcelo Huerta. And he wow. missed the first one. Now, keep in mind, the second player in the lane, the green jersey, has a slight advantage in terms of offensive rebounding. This is a situation that you practice. You practice missing this free throw. Watch the guards. There's the miss. Watch out. In the corner, Barbosa. No, and the U.S. hangs on to stay undefeated. What a game in Istanbul. And the U.S. survives its most difficult test so far. Fran and I'll be back with some final thoughts in this two-point U.S. victory as they go 3-0 in Group B. In Istanbul, the U.S. hangs on 70 to 68 over Brazil. Fran Marcelo Huertas missed the first free throw and then tried to intentionally miss and did. And here's well, the play. Watch this. See, the guards are not supposed to move in FIBA play until the ball hits the rim. Huertas did a great job of missing, getting his own rebound, and it stunned Team USA, who was very, very fortunate to escape a game Brazil team today who was well coached and executed terrifically down the stretch of this game. USA played a good brand of defense in that fourth quarter, but Brazil, you know, there's a mix there. There's good defense and there's going cold, and even the shot you saw Barbosa there came so close at the end, didn't fall. Well, you're exactly right. For Team USA, you have to look at your half-court offense and say, we've got to be much crisper uh, as we move into knockout round play. Team USA, very fortunate today, but a young team, give them credit for winning a game like this because this is a game that could cost you a gold medal. Great finish, Kevin Durant at 27, USA 70 to 68 over Brazil. Our next game Wednesday, noon Eastern from Istanbul, the U.S. against Iran. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For Fran Fraschilla and our entire ESPN crew, I'm Mark Kestesher. Goodbye from Istanbul. Right now, Mike Yam in the studio.